Welcome back to the ninth and final section of chapter one. In this section, we will be looking at an introduction to parent functions. This section is kind of like the last section where it's not review as much as it's uh, looking forward and an overview of what we're going to look at this year, at least some of what we're going to look at this year. And so um, it's going to be kind of new, um, but it's not going to go very far in depth. There's a lot more depth in this that we will get to later this year. This is just scratching the surface. Our learning targets for today, I can identify parent functions and graphs from graphs and equations, and I can use parent functions to model real world data and make estimates for unknown values. And this is going to be a very, very scratching the surface type one. We'll get into that in much greater detail as the year progresses. But first of all, parent functions. I have a table here we're going to work on filling out the table. Um, parent functions, though, in the general the definition, it is the simplest, most basic function in a family. A parent function is the simplest, most basic function in a family. Now, parents, I did not say that you are the simplest, most basic piece of a family. This is only for functions. You are very, very important to the family. If it were not for you, your children would probably starve to death once they emptied the pantry. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a family of functions. The first family we're going to look at is the most boring family there is, and that would be the constant family. Um, the rule or the equation for the parent function for the constant family is just f of x equals a number f of x equals 3, f of x equals 5, f of x equals negative 2, f of x equals pi. It doesn't matter what that number is. That's what the rule is for the parent function. If we wanted to graph one of these, um, it's just a horizontal line at whatever that number is. So this would be the y value c. It goes over. If it was negative, it would be down here. And it's just horizontal line. Again, very, very boring. We'll get into some more exciting ones later on. Uh, the domain of a constant function, what could x equal? Well, x could equal anything at once. There's nothing stopping what x equals. When it can equal anything at once, it means it's all reals. And the range, what could y equal? Well, y can equal only one thing, c. Remember, f of x is the same as y. f of x equals c means y equals c. And finally, let's look at our y-intercept. The y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis when x equals 0. So the y-intercept is going to be a point. It's going to be 0, comma, something. Well, what does y equal in this case? It equals c. So it's just 0, comma, c. Again, constant family, amazingly boring. The next family, which is slightly less boring, is the linear family. You spent a lot of time and effort on this in Algebra 1, working with lines. The rule, the most basic linear equation, is f of x equals x. Slope 1, y is of 0, right? mx plus b. There's no m, so that means 1. There's no b, that means 0. The graph of this line is just this one. Just diagonal, slope 1, y is of 0. Um, using transformations, we'll be able to move this into any other line we want, but the parent function is just this one. The domain, well, x, we can put anything we want in there. So the domain, all real numbers. The range, we're going to get out anything we want, all real numbers. And the y-intercept is 0. Is it the origin? 0, comma, 0. Remember, the y-intercept is always going to be 0, comma, something. The next family which is getting a little bit more interesting, is the quadratic family. You dealt a little bit with this in Algebra 1, um, but this would be f of x equals x squared. When we graph it, it looks like this shape, which is called a parabola. Um, and it's notice it's always positive, because when we square things, it's going to be a positive number, and it has a curve to it. The domain, what can we put in there? We can put anything we want in there. The domain is, all is again, all real numbers. But the range, we have nothing in the negative. The range is going to be here. It's going to be greater than or equal to 0 because it could equal 0 if x equals 0, y equals 0. 
So the range is y is greater than or equal to 0. And the y-intercept is, again, the origin, 0, 0. So um, I just forgot what I was going to say. Oh, so here we have the range is y is greater than or equal to 0. If we were to do transformations on it, like say we were going to move it up a couple, that would change the range. If we moved it up 3, well, y is now going to be greater than or equal to 3. So these will change. All real numbers won't change with any transformation we do, um, but the y-intercept will change. We were doing transformations with points yesterday. You do the same thing. Notice if you multiply something to this, it's still going to be 0, 0, but if you add or subtract, it'll change. And this could change. Technically, you doing vertical translations, we can change this too, but it's just a different constant function. Again, boring. The next family is one that you probably haven't seen much of, and that's the cubic family. Um, though we'll get to linear. We'll do a lot of those in Chapter 2. Quadratics, Chapter 5. We'll deal with cubics in Chapter 6. And a cubic is f of x equals x cubed. In Chapter 6, we'll also get x to the 4th, x to the 5th, x to the 6th, x to the anything we want. Uh, if we graph the cubic, it looks kind of like a quadratic, except that the side has been bent downwards, and then it's also a bit squished in more than the quadratic is. So this one goes up steeper, because at 1, it's going to equal 1, but at 2, the cubic's going to equal 8, when the quadratic is only going to equal 4. So it does go a bit steeper there. Um, and then it keeps the signs. So when x is negative, y is negative. So the domain, again, all real numbers, because we can put anything we want to here. And then the range... Here it was just y is greater than or equal to 0, because when you square it, it's positive. But when you cube it, it keeps the sign. So being that x could be whatever sign it wants, anything it wants, y could be anything it wants. And the origin, or the intercept, is again at 0, 0. And the last family we're going to look at in this chapter, which we will see again in chapter 8, is the square root function. And the parent function for the square root function is just f of x equals the square root of x. If we graph this, we get one that looks like this. It starts here, and it goes up and over. looks kind of like a quadratic, but turned on its side, and then only half of it. And there's a reason for that. We'll see that later on this year, too. Um, the domain, notice it starts here. There's nothing over here. x can't be negative, because... When x is negative, you have the square root of a negative number, and you can't do that, which isn't entirely true. We'll see about that later on this year as well. Um, but for now, you don't want to be square rooting negative numbers. So x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So hey, it's a domain that's a little bit more interesting. It's not just all reals. And then y, also greater than or equal to 0, because when you square root a number, you're going to get a positive number. And the y-intercept is, once again, 0, 0. All right, so these are the parent functions we're looking at. And before we move on, I want to look at these y-intercepts. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Did you ever get the feeling that the origin was watching you? Hmm. Anyway, identifying parent functions and transformations. Yeah, once you see that, you'll never unsee it. Um, so identifying parent functions and transformations. If we have an equation, say f of x equals x squared minus 3, well, what parent function would this be? What does it look like? What should we be looking for? How about, hey, there's an x squared. That would be quadratic. And then what's the transformation? Yesterday we were looking, or not yesterday, last time we were looking at um, the transformations, and we have this minus 3. What is a minus 3 going to do? It's going to be a translation 3. Which direction? It's either going to be down 3 or it's going to be um, 3 over. Well, in this case, fx squared is the y. That's the f of x. We're subtracting 3 from that. This is going to be down 3. If this were going to be over, we'd have a x minus 3 in the squared. Like all in that would have parentheses there. Um, so this is up or down. We're going to be dealing with this a lot um, in coming chapters. Um, but this will be down 3. 
another way of seeing it is to graph it. Most of you have graphing calculators. My guess is you can use a graphing calculator to graph an equation. If not, there's a y equals button up in the top left hand corner. You just type x squared minus 3, hit graph, and you'll see what it looks like. Um, if we first start with the parent function, just y equals x squared, looks like that, which is that's from the previous page. And then if we do x squared minus 3, we get a graph that looks like that. And so we can see that this red graph moved down 3 to be the green graph. And so by graphing both of them, we can see, hey, that's just down 3. And so we can identify the transformation that way as well. That's another way we'll be doing it today specifically, and we'll be getting way more formal with this later on this year. Uh, look at another one. g of x equals x plus 5. What kind of parent function is it? Oh, well, let's see. We had an x squared over here. Here we just have an x. What would be, what would be the x? That would be linear. And we have plus 5. That means it's going to go either up 5 or over 5, and not sure which one. Well, the thing with linear, one of the things that makes them boring is it's actually going to do both. It's going to go up 5. It also moves it over 5. Again, it's, it's kind of boring. Um, but we start out with the regular one, and then we graph the other one, the, one, the plus 5. And hey, it moved it up 5. It also moved it over 5, but did it move it over 5 in the direction you thought it would? This would be more of a negative movement. Huh, that's weird. I guess we'll see more about that next chapter when we're looking at lines. And then one more, h of x equals 2 root x. What kind of parent function is this? Well, what's the big thing here? Hey, look, there's a square root in the equation. What kind of parent function do you think will have a square root? Oh, a square root function. Amazing. And then what are we doing to it? We're multiplying by 2. That's going to be a stretch of 2. And it's going to be vertical because it's happening to the parent function. Horizontal would be happening to the x value. It would be inside the square root with the x. And again, we will see that a lot more later. Um, but looking at the graph, if we look at just the square root of x, it looks like that. If we do 2 root x, it's going to look like that. Notice that vertical stretch by 2, it pulled it. All of the y values doubled. Uh, and so that's looking at parent functions and transformations. Chances are we're going to be looking at them by graphing them. Um, if you don't have a graphing calculator at home, you can always graph a couple points or use a graphing calculator in the classroom. Um, the other thing is looking at points and seeing what kind of shape it might make. For those, graph the points. Just graph them on a piece of graph paper and see what shape. Do they look about linear? Do they look quadratic? Is there that curve in it? Um, what shape are they making in general? And then just kind of sketch a line and see about what value are you looking for. Uh, again, we're not getting really in depth in this topic right now. We're going to do it a lot, like we'll work with lines, uh, next chapter, quadratics, chapter 5, and we'll be doing this a lot throughout the year. Right now, you're just starting to get the, the general feel for it. And so, this is the end of section 9. It's the end of chapter 1. Hopefully, at this point, you can finish your homework and be getting ready for the test.